Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Environmental Science. Video 16, it's on agriculture. This is a picture of wheat. We grind it to make flour and then make things like bread, and we've been doing so for thousands of years. This sickle is over 5,000 years old and was used to harvest wheat. We still harvest wheat today in a similar fashion, but now on an industrial scale. What's the function of agriculture? It's to provide for our human nutritional requirements. If you don't get enough calories in your diet, we call that undernourishment. And it's less of a problem. We generally can make enough food, but it's not always in the right place at the right time. And things like war can disrupt that flow. A bigger problem is malnutrition. It's when you're not getting the proper nutrients. You're not getting the right proteins, vitamins, minerals in your diet. A growing problem is actually overnutrition, where we eat too much and can lead to things like obesity. Agriculture provides for these needs and it's been doing so for thousands of years. Now what happened with industrialization is as we had exponential growth in the population, we had to feed that population. And therefore we had the green revolution where we have industrial agriculture today. There are five characteristics of that. The first one is monocropping, when you plant just one crop type. Um, we also have irrigation, the use of pesticides that target different things. The major ones are herbicides and insecticides. We use fertilizers. Some of those are gonna be organic like manure, but a lot of those are going to be synthetic and now we have the arrival of genetically modified organisms. All of these together have allowed us to create more food than we ever have but each of them have drawbacks. Monocropping for example when you harvest all of those plants it can lead to soil erosion and a lack of biodiversity. How could we prevent soil erosion? Things like contour plowing. Irrigation depletes aquifers and can lead to salinization so we could maybe have the arrival of new salt tolerant crops. Pesticides have a double problem. Pests are going to become resistant to the pest pesticides, and also those chemicals are going to bioaccumulate within the food web. Um, what can we do? We can use uh, processes like integrated pest management to try to mediate those problems. Fertilizers require a lot of energy. They require fossil fuels to make, and also they will run off the fields and enter into the food web causing things like eutrophication. So what can we do? We can use other crops as fertilizers using something called intercropping. Genetically modified organisms, most of the studies are saying are not harmful to humans to eat, but they can lead to a decrease in biodiversity. And so there's a big push away from industrial agriculture towards alternative agriculture. We still have to feed the humans on our planet, but we can do it in a smarter way. And so if we look at the history of farming, most of it has been subsistence. So this is over 3,000 years old in a burial tomb and so this is an early farmer plowing his field and so what's happened is as the population has grown exponentially we've only been able to create food in a linearly increasing fashion and so eventually what you have is this catastrophe where you can't make enough food to feed everyone and this happened in the last century so we could see that the food growth it was quickly going to be outpaced by the exponential growth of the population. And so biologists like Norman Borlaug, farmers brought forth these industrial ways called the Green Revolution of providing more food. You could see this in wheat yields. So this is in developing countries. Back in the last century, it was increasing in a linear fashion. And then we had this green revolution places like India and Mexico. So what are the characteristics of industrial agriculture? One big one is monocropping. It's when you plant just one crop. So this is corn, for example. What's great about that? You become really good at planting corn and taking care of corn. It's easier to plant this way. It's easier to harvest it as well. What are some of the problems? Well, we have a decrease in biodiversity and it can lead to things like soil erosion. You have to harvest all that food at the same time. Rain can wash that really valuable soil away. So what would, could we do to prevent that? Things like contour plowing, where you're plowing with the contour of the field, keeps it flat, the surface is flat, so we have less of that runoff. Irrigation has allowed us to farm in areas where we never could have in the past. So this is in Kansas, for example. What are some problems with irrigation? Well, you're gonna deplete the, this is the Oglala re, uh, aquifer that this sits on, so eventually that will run out. You also have the problem of salinization. So rainwater will generally wash the natural salt away but if you start pumping water out of the ground that's groundwater and it's going to contain salt those drops of water have salt in it and so we're going to have an increase in salt salinization over time how do we solve this well we could try varying the crops that we have we could limit irrigation or we could start to evolve uh, through artificial selection salt tolerant crops
Another major part of industrial agriculture is the use of pesticides. The major ones are going to be herbicides that kill other plants or weeds. We have insecticides, fungicides, and other biocides. Now, why are farmers using them? It's because they can get return on their investment. For every dollar they spend on pesticides, they get $4 in higher crop yield. So an example, if we look at one of the most popular herbicides in America, atrazine, it's a broadleaf plant killer. So it's going to kill the weeds in in crops uh, like corn. And so you can see it's going to be aggregated when we're, where we're growing a lot of corn. And the reason why is they can get more corn back. Now, what are the problems with this? One is bioaccumulation. Those chemicals don't just go away. They're going to build up in the food pyramid. And so the pests are killed, but they're eaten by other consumers and other consumers. Like the example that we're familiar with is DDT aggregating inside and eventually killing things like bald eagles. Um, another problem is is resistance. If you spray pesticides, what pests are you killing? The ones are least resistant. So if you spray it the first time, you'll kill a lot of those insects, but the ones that survive are resistant. And over time through natural selection, those pesticides don't work anymore. So how do we solve this problem? Well, if we look at the population of the pest itself, so one individual pest, it's going to undergo exponential and then logistic growth. And so right down here in this area, it doesn't make sense, financial sense, to spray pesticides. The numbers aren't large enough. We haven't gone over what's called the economic injury level. And so if farmers are constantly monitoring the fields, figuring out what pests do I have, what's the level of them, they can use other things aside from pesticides. We could use, we could mechanically remove those pests. We could use things like traps. We could use other life. We could use things like this lacewing larva to kill other aphids. And then we can monitor it to the point where maybe it's going to a level where it's going to hurt us. So then we could use pesticides, but we could use pesticides wisely. Another characteristic of industrial agriculture is the use of fertilizers. It puts those important nutrients that plants need like nitrogen, potassium, potassium, phosphorus into the soil. And so this right here is spraying anhydrous ammonia into the soil. So that, that's a process that, that humans have invented to take nitrogen out of the air using the Haber process and making ammonia out of it. You can spray it on the fields and the plants are going to grow more quickly with a higher yield. What's the problem? As we have rain, that runoff is going to push those fertilizers into the water supply and can lead to problems like eutrophication. How could we solve this problem? Well, we could start using other crops. And so this is intercropping where we're having beans mixed in with corn. And so the beans are providing manure, essentially green manure for that corn to grow. A growing characteristic of industrial agriculture is the use of genetically modified organisms. Now we've always been breeding plants, but recently we're taking genes from one organism and inserting them in another. An example could be golden rice. And so you're inserting genes into rice so they produce vitamin A. Why is this a big deal? Over a half a million children under the age of five die each year due to vitamin deficiency. So we could insert those genes, they can eat the rice, and that's not going to be a problem. Another example could be tea corn. We're taking genes from a bacteria, inserting it in corn, and it produces a natural pesticide, so things like a corn borer can't eat it. Now, most of the studies are saying that this food is generally safe for humans to eat, but depending on where you are, in the US we use lots of GMOs, but in Europe, not so much. And and so there is um, controversy over the effects to the environment uh, through the use of genetically modified organisms. And so the current push is towards sustainable agriculture. We don't want to have to, such an impact on our planet. And what's interesting is a lot of these practices will return us towards our subsistence farming roots. And so did you learn the following? Could you pause the video at this point and fill in all the blanks? Well, let me do it for you. So malnutrition is a lack of calories. The green revolution led to industrial agriculture. Some of the characteristics are monocropping, irrigation, pesticides, fertilizers, and GMOs. Herbicides are the most popular type of pesticides pesticides. Our fertilizers can be either organic or synthetic. And what are we moving towards? Alternative agriculture, where we don't have so much of an impact on our planet. And I hope that was helpful.